Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. This is our how to make a t-shirt quilt series and today we're going to be working on cutting out our t-shirt designs that are going to be our quilt blocks. So I've got a couple that I'm going to cut on camera here for you today. One that's super simple so you can see the process and one that's a little bit bigger plus we've got like a pocket square so you can kind of see how I judge what's going to work in a t-shirt quilt and what and how we can best use all the designs so that we can remember them all. All right, so we're gonna start out with the easy one. So this is from Paducah. This is when we were down there for a quilt show. I got this really fun one. We quilt the city, Paducah, Kentucky. So the first thing I wanna do is there's nothing on the back of the shirt. It's just the front design. So that's all we need to worry about. The rest of the rag or the shirt can just become a rag for dusting or whatever, so they're, it's not totally lost. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my scissors to sort of cut up the sides. Now I'm gonna cut through the sleeves at the same time. You might wanna be a little careful at this step if you have a smaller shirt, because if you have one that's very petite, you might not have 12 and a half inches to work with here. Let me give you an example. So right now, if I lay this over, I can see that I got plenty of wiggle room here because I had had children by the time I bought this shirt, it's a large. If you had a small or you're working with like a petite um, young lady who's graduating from high school, you might be cutting a little bit into the sleeves. I've done that with some, you know, baseball sleeve designs before. So just make sure before you get cutting, maybe the sleeves off, that you lay this out because you might need to utilize some of the sleeve in your block design. So just be aware of that before you start cutting. All right, now I'm just gonna cut across those shoulder seams. And we're gonna go the same thing on the other side. All right, so now we can take the parts that we don't need and just put them away, use them for dusting. You know, don't, don't toss them, but they can absolutely be used for something else. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna smooth this out because I wanna start with a nice smooth block center. This is why it's, it's a little bit easier to do this ahead of time is to cut everything apart. Now there's two ways to do this. Some people will cut their interfacing to be like 14 inches square and they will fuse it to the back of the design first and then they will cut it out. I am incredibly um, particular of where I want things to be. So that like terrifies me a little bit that maybe it won't end up in the right spot. So what I do is I cut my t-shirt before I fuse my interfacing and then I fuse my interfacing at a separate step. Um, but know that if this is super challenging for you, you can just cut the interfacing a little bit larger, fuse it first, and then cut it to size like we're about to do here. And it'll be nice and flat instead of, you know, a little wavy because we're still dealing with a knit t-shirt. All right, so now is when I need my 12 and a half inch square ruler. And I'm gonna bring that as far up in this case to the neck as I can because this is not quite centered. We can see that I've got about two and a half in, or actually exactly two inches above this design, but I have quite a bit below. Um, we've got one, two, three, four and a half inches below. So I want that as far up as I can get it because they aren't always like dead center where you can get the motif right in the center of it. And that's okay because when we go to lay this out, we'll put it next to a design that maybe has more going on. And this will help give the eye a place to rest rather than having busy designs absolutely everywhere all lumped together. But we'll talk more about that in a later video. So one thing that I'm gonna be paying attention to here is this sewing machine, and usually almost all t-shirts have this, where there is a really hard kind of stop line. So we can see right here, that's where the bottom of the sewing machine is. So I wanna make sure that that is on an inch line because then it will look like if I have it like this, it's gonna look crooked in the final design. So we wanna make sure that we're paying attention to like what is the obvious thing that people are looking at. And I think it's gonna be this line. You also could line it up with the, the words below, that would be fine. Now, the other thing I wanna do is make sure that we're centered on this side, because we can't be centered this way, there's not enough shirt. 
but we can be centered this way. So there is a string coming off of the sewing machine and coming all the way out, but I don't really see that as the center. I see like this sewing machine where this comes off as my center. So right now I've got one, two inches on the side here, and I have one, two inches on the side here. So that is pretty even, that's pretty good. If you're having trouble measuring like that, you can also just put your hands on the side. And right now I've got three fingers on either side. And so I know I'm pretty center and that works out pretty well. So there's a couple of different ways to go about this. Once you're happy with where your ruler is placed on your t-shirt quilt, we don't wanna to touch anything, we don't wanna move anything. So what I wanna do is just put my hand I put my pinky to the side. It helps keep the ruler from shifting. And for right now, I'm just going to cut up the side and the top. And I am right-handed, so I am starting on the right side. If you are left-handed, you will start on the left side. Okay. So now, without moving the ruler or the t-shirt, we need to cut the other side. The easiest thing to do is just to walk around to the other side of your table. I can't do that because all my cameras and lights are over there. So I'm gonna rotate the entire mat. When I do this, I mean super careful not to shift my t-shirt or my ruler. Because the second I move either of these things, that knit fabric is gonna move and I'm never gonna have a square again. I'm gonna have to fuss with it to make it work. All right, so we're pretty good. We got everything where we need it. I haven't moved anything. So now I can cut my left side and my top again. All right, now I can lift this up and I should be able to just lift this out. Now, if any of your corners are still attached, you just wanna grab your scissors and clip those because otherwise you'll end up with like little shavings everywhere if you try to get it with your rotary cutter. So now this one's cut, this one is good to go. We can add this to our rag pile and we're gonna keep on going until all of our shirts are ready to go in the quilt. All right, I told you we'd do some more complicated ones as well. So this one we got, we're gonna be able to get a pocket square from the front and on the back, we're gonna have a big design here. Now only like twice in all the t-shirt quilts that I've done, have I had a design that would not fit on my 12 and a half inch square ruler. This one fits like just inside of it. It's gonna look really good. But if for some reason it's bigger than that, just remember that your outside quarter inch is gonna be eaten up by the sewing or by your seam allowance. So you might wanna consider that when you're putting things in there. So what I wanna do here is I wanna cut up my sides again. So that way I can use, cut the front of the shirt separate from the back of the shirt. All right, so I'm gonna start with my pocket square. I'm gonna want my six and a half inch square ruler for this. And again, we're using the same concepts as before. We want it centered and we want it level. All right, so right now I've got a half inch line lined up underneath Savannah, Georgia. Now I'm gonna use my fingers on the side here to kind of make sure I've got even amounts on the sides of the pirate house, I do now. So now I'm gonna count up. I've got one, two inches below and I've got one, two inches above. So I've done a pretty good job of centering that. I'm gonna put my whole palm down on the ruler so it doesn't shift on me, that would be very bad. And I've got my pinky to the side. That keeps my finger out of the way of cutting it with that rotary cutter. It also helps really stabilize that ruler very well. Now, if I were doing this not on camera, I would just walk to the other side and cut it, but I'm gonna turn my entire board here. I actually am also lifting the bottom of the shirt up so that it doesn't catch on anything and move. All right, we've got our tiny little pocket square ready to go. Now it's time to do the back side of the shirt. I'm back to that 12 and a half inch ruler again. The first thing I'm gonna do, I think is line up the sides. And again, a lot of times I just use my fingers for this. So I'll put them on the side and I'll make sure that I've got equal amounts on the sides here. Now I can tell that we are not straight because I've got about less than three quarters of an inch available here. And I've got more about one and a quarter over there. So I am not straight. So we need to kind of fix that somehow. So I'm gonna switch that. Now we're at about seven eighths over here and about seven eighths over here. So that is looking pretty good. My 45 degree angle is not going straight through the crossbone, but my inch line here is going through booty at uh, about the same pace. It's just a fun word to say. 
And same thing with surrender up here. And sometimes too, you can kind of give the shirt a little bit of a pull to get it more where you want it to be. And that is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this placement. Lift that up so it doesn't catch, turn the whole thing. Very nice. Now we've got one that fills the whole square a little better and we've got it very well centered, very straight. This is gonna look very good in a t-shirt quilt. All right, I've grabbed one more shirt to cut for you guys on camera. It's a problem child shirt. It is one where the screen printing takes up almost the entire usable space of the block. So I'm gonna show you how to line it up. Of course it is my don't mess with Texas shirt because everything is bigger in Texas, right? All right, so I'm gonna start by putting everything on top of there. And we can see that this design is coming right to the edges. We've got our quarter inch here and here. And right now, if I do this as is, I'm, I'm centered with the design this way, but I'm really barely gonna have any S on here. So I kinda wanna, I think, just move it over a little bit and get it so I've got a little bit more room because this red here, like you can see it, it's cool, but the S is what's gonna look off if we don't have that part there a little bit more centered. All right, so next, now that I'm kind of a little bit more happy with where that's at, I'm gonna try to pick one of these lines. Now, it isn't exactly straight, but this width here is pretty straight there. So that's a good one. It looks like I'm doing pretty good in terms of it, you know, not being cockeyed. So now I'm gonna turn my attention to the top and the bottom. Right now, the top of the D is right at that quarter inch mark. That's gonna be a problem because it's, it could get cut off if my seam allowance isn't perfect. But I do have a little bit of wiggle room here on the bottom. I've got about three eighths of an inch there. So I'm gonna split that difference. That way I've got just a little bit more breathing room between the top of the D and the quarter. And I still have breathing room down here too with this X and the quarter inch. So now that I'm happy with this placement, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a cut. All right, that looks good. I've got breathing room on the top and bottom and on the sides. And even though like this, like scrape in the background of red and blue, it goes all the way out. I'm a little bit more centered with my S and my T to where it doesn't look like it's totally off kilter there and everything's nice and straight. So that looks good. This, by the way, is from Quilt Market. So a lot of my travels have been quilting related. I also have a whole bunch of quilting shirts, but I still wear them all the time. So someday they'll get retired when they are too worn and end up in a shirt as well. I hope that you have enjoyed cutting out some t-shirts with me, and I hope that you are inspired to go dig through your t-shirt collection that maybe you're not wearing anymore and make one of these yourself. It really is not hard. You just have to be a little bit thoughtful when you're cutting and you will be good to go. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to cut your interfacing and your sashing strips, and then we're gonna be ready to fuse these and get our quilt top sewn together. It really goes very, very fast. Back in the day, I used to plan like one hour per t-shirt, including the quilting and binding. So it really is a very quick project um, once you kind of get some of the basics down and get comfortable with it. All right, don't forget, this is just one video of many in a t-shirt quilt series that we have here at quiltmaddoxanonymous.com. We have all the supplies you need to get it and a pattern that you can uh, download as well. And if you are following along with us in real time, you will be done in time to get this for graduation this May. So make sure that you are liked and subscribed, that you follow us on our email list. And if you get your pressing mat and your interfacing from us, you can get the pattern for free. So make sure you check that out out. And we've got all the other supplies you need as well over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, we'll be back in a little bit on how to do interfacing, cutting that, and your sash and cornerstones. <music>